Rainworld's workshop is now five months old. A crucial mod called Custom Region Support has been released. Originally by Garax and now maintained by Bro, Custom Region Support adds a ton of new tools that, well, support the Custom Region experience. For example, procedural threat music and custom pearls were not possible without Custom Region Support. Now, although Custom Region Support is great on its own, since a bunch of 1.5 region mods relied on it, they can now be ported over to 1.9 and obviously the workshop. So soon we'll be getting ports of the amazing regions like Hanging Gardens or Floating Isles. Since custom region support is so influential to region modding, I'm going to give it mod of the month due to its importance. To account for all the upcoming ports, I've decided to create a new segment in these modding monthly showcases. This section is for me to cover 1.5 ports, which is also not limited to custom regions, so keep an eye out for that later in the video. As always, downpour spoiler warning, so without further ado, let's get on to the mods. Exploding Batflies by Noir Kato makes batflies explode on contact with any creature. This not only makes them inedible, but also a massive threat to the player, and I guess the whole ecosystem. You can see in the video, they kind of act like a platforming obstacle. This is a very simple mod, but adds a really fun challenge to the game. The Similar by Cotton adds a cute new slug cat to the game. This weasel looking fella has a few abilities up its sleeve, the first being its ability to photosynthesize. When the similar is outside, the food meter will passively go up, with increments of one quarter. Its second ability comes from its plant tail, which will attract batflies identical to batnip. Its third ability is camouflage, where it will enter a stealthy state when crouching. This state makes it impossible for enemies to see you, so you can sneak past them or jump them. The similar's final ability is to convert almost all food pips into karma reinforcement, which is the same effect as eating a karma flower. In my opinion, this slug cat is way too easy to play, like it has so many upsides and like no downsides. But if you're in the market for something like that, then this is your slug cat. Credit where credit is due, this slug cat is very well made. Strong Delivery by Nasu gives Gorman the ability to throw small creatures violently. This attack deals damage to other creatures, which is pretty funny, and it lets you use your own children as weapons. This could also lead to some wild movement tech, but I'm not a nerd, so I'm, I don't know anything about that. Pebbles Reads Pearls by 4th Bridge and Sidera allows for Pebbles to read pearls in Rivulet's timeline. I'm not sure why he doesn't in normal downpour, like, he doesn't have much else to do. <laughs> and he's clearly interested in pearls in Artificer's time, so it's like, just read the damn pearls, mate! Since Pebbles can read pearls during Artificer's timeline, most of the dialogue is just altered slightly. But there's some new pearls like the one Rivulet starts with and the submerged superstructure one. I think this is one of the mods that everyone should get because it should have been in the actual DLC. Millions' is Challenges by Millions5252 adds a dozen new challenges to challenge mode. There are some pretty creative ones that I enjoyed playing, and also I didn't even know you can play as a slug pup in challenge mode, that's pretty fun. And of course there is a based Yika postmodern RPG reference in there. Overall, if you enjoy doing challenge mode challenges, well this is the mod for you. Gay World by Moon adds a bunch of optimal gaming PC hardware to the game, in the form of RGB lighting that is. This RGB affects not only creatures, items, the menu itself, but also light sources, making it a pretty overstimulating mod if you ask me. Since Submerge Superstructure's vents use a ton of light sources, the whole place gets affected by gamer power. Overall, a pretty trippy mod. I would be a bit careful if you have photosensitivity issues, since the mod can be a bit overbearing at times. A fun mod to check out nonetheless. Rainy World Funking by Silky adds a brand new minigame to the Rainworld menu. This minigame resembling the Kickstarter scam Friday Night Funking. You can play iconic songs from Friday Night Funking, in which you face off a compute opponent in the epic rap battle. This is a pretty wild Rainworld mod, like why is it even here? I mean, I'm not complaining, it is pretty funny. Don't tell the developer this, but there's no penalty for missing the arrows, meaning you can just exploit your way through by mashing the keys. I am absolutely dreadful at rhythm games, so that's how I did most of the levels. The mod also provides framework for making your own Rainy Night Funking levels, similar to the actual game. Hopefully we see some Friday Night Funking mods ported over to Rainworld. Oh my god, bro. Oh, hell no, man. What the f***, man? Actually, you know what? Never mind. Props to Silky, though. This is definitely a fun mod. Marshland Wastes by Tcan adds the swampy Marshland Wastes to Rainworld. 
This new region has tons of new rooms to explore, spanning across three new sub-regions. I'm not going to show too much of the region since you can explore it yourself. The entrance to it is on the left side of garbage wastes, or the top right side of farm arrays. The region also connects to pipe yard and chimney canopy. Although the rooms are a little rough around the edges, which is completely understandable since it's the creator's first region, I do want to congratulate Marshland Wastes for being the first substantial non-port region that is available on the Steam Workshop. This is a big milestone in region modding, and with custom region support I hope we see some more banging regions come out. Some notes about Marshland Waste is that the Garbage Waste connection has a past variant, and the whole region has saint settings, which are really annoying to do, so props to the developer for including these details. Extra Threat Themes by Trin adds a bunch of fan-made threat tracks to regions without threat music. I'm gonna showcase my two favourite threat tracks, only because I'll be here all day if I did the other ones. The first is The Wall Day by Axe Yee. I also want to showcase the subterranean threat theme by Sidera. There are so many more threat tracks that this mod adds, so I'll leave a link to the threat tracks and who made them in this mod segment, so you can check them all out if you want to. Now the next mod was going to be Bakuya's custom Slugcat support in Expedition, but Naku the modding big shot took a commission and added it to actual Slugbase, so I guess this section is now a PSA. You can now play Slugbase Slugcats in Expedition mode. I did literally record a whole ass Expedition of me and Sigma, go check out his channel doing a custom Slugcat expedition and we literally got stuck in Pipe Yard for an hour so I'm a little bit salty about the Slug Base update undermining that footage. Props to Pakuyo and Nasu for making their respective versions, since Slug Base was definitely lacking in the expedition department. Biography by Harvey adds a catalogue of new creatures to the main menu screen. It can be accessed by pressing the little lizard icon next to the collection button. All the creatures that you have unlocked for Arena appear here and selecting a creature spawns it in in this little box, where it is trapped for the player's amusement. Custom creature IDs can be selected, which spawns that ID, which is very nifty. Information about the ID's personality, creature stats, and general creature relationships are displayed. I like the Leviathan since it just doesn't fit in the box, which is funny, but definitely a cool mod. I wish you could interact more with the creature in the box, and it would be cool to have a summary about what the creatures do when you select them. Darkness by Pakuyo, commissioned by QWQ, adds a slug cat without the ability to see, which is not unlike the Hunter x Hunter character Kamugi. This blindness makes all of the rooms very dark, but to compensate the darkness gets an Iggy-like scan effect that gives a small area around it clarity. This isn't as good as regular slug cat vision, but can help in certain situations, for example detecting a stowaway. This echolocation effect can be extended temporarily by pressing left shift, which I don't think has any downside. Upon reaching 10 karma from the final echo, the darkness awakens its special ability, summoning a comically large nail spear. These big nails can be willed into existence by holding grab, and the darkness will gain one food pit from hitting a target with it, which is reusable too. Unfortunate souls who get hit by the cursing nail take a massive amount of damage, with them being able to kill most creatures in the game in one shot. 
In this footage, I down a reindeer in four hits, which is definitely proving of its strength. Overall, I think the darkness is a fun slug cat, as long as you get used to the constant scan effect. I wish the nails were unlocked earlier in the campaign, as I think they're a cool ability but unlocked too late. I think with each echo visited they should have powered up, that would have made for a fun ability throughout the campaign. Expeditions Enhanced by Nasu, commissioned by the redesigner, implements brand new perks and burdens to expedition mode. Here is a list of the new perks. The blue fruit perk adds four blue fruit to the starting shelter. Okay, this is a certified Tory perk, don't run this shit. The leeching perk gives a food bonus when you kill a creature. The food bonus is dependent on how large the creature is. For example, snails give four to food pips, but lizards give more than two. I like the cool absorption effect whenever a slug cat kills a creature, it's a really nice detail. The friend perk spawns a tamed lizard in the starting shelter. Saint's Tongue gives other slug cats Saint's Tongue, which has good synergy with characters like Gourmand and Artificer. Explosive damage gives spear shots an explosive property. The triggered explosion seems to deal no damage, but will definitely cause the creature it hits to lose its footing. The Make-A-Wish perk activates when Slug Cat throws a pearl into a death pit. Doing so will obviously lose the pearl, but the Slug Cat will get cool items in return. I think this is my favourite perk because it adds a bit of value to pearls rather than just a scavenger trade item. And the particle effect of the little fairy rising out of the death pit to give Slug Cats its items is really cool. On to the two burdens. Firstly, the Crippled Burden, which increases full damage. This is a certified Geralt from the Witcher 3 moment. The second burden is Confused, which makes it impossible for Slug Cat to see the map or the rain timer. Not gonna lie, these burdens kind of suck, but that can be fixed. You see, Naku actually provided a framework so people can make their own perks and burdens. Hopefully someone makes an expedition mod with 100 burdens, that'll be a fun one to test. <laughs> But yeah, fun mod, especially when paired with the newly added custom slug cat expeditions. The Outsider by Quay Leddy adds a funny little moth slug cat to the game. This little blighter wouldn't work for me for like two months, and I finally got it working. The reason why it wasn't working for me is because I was using the media access version of the game, which was a more unstable version. So I guess this is another PSA. But if you had the early access to Downpour, thank you Akapara for giving me early access, Make sure you manually leave the demo, which will make the game more stable. Anyway, back to Outsider. This glowy gremlin has the ability to fly. Pressing the jump button mid-air causes the Outsider to flap its wings. This will give it a bit of height and speed, as well as starting a glide until it hits the ground again. Pressing jump while it's in its glide state causes the Outsider to flap its wings again, giving it additional height and potential speed. There is no limit to how many flaps it can do during a glide, but each one drains 1 16th of a food pit. Even though 1 16th is minuscule, it builds up over time, and so the outsider gets very hungry if you use additional flaps a lot. Overall, I think the flight is very well executed, and it's actually incredibly fun to use, which is kind of a rare thing in modded slug cats. And although I'm not the biggest fan of slug cats having food requirements tied to their abilities, it works in the outsider's case due to its high mobility. The outsider can also spend one food pit to do a flare attack, which is basically an on-demand flash fruit that will blind most creatures and kill photosensitive enemies. This ability felt unnecessary, and I probably used it accidentally more times than I actually intended to use it. The Outsider is also a vegetarian, meaning it can only eat plants, and Spore Puff's a moth repellent, so attempting to eat one will kill the Outsider. As for the world state, the Outsider is set between Rivulet and Saint. Pebbles has just collapsed and the rain has completely stopped meaning each cycle lasts indefinitely. Each region has become a lot darker in palette and dust has started to form. Drainage system has been renamed to Dry Ditch and all water present has now dried up. This leads to the place feeling incredibly creepy, like this, this place is scary. I guess it's caused by the uncanniness of expecting water and there not being any, especially when accompanied by the dark palette. This version of drainage system provides an interesting ordeal for the outsider, as giant empty pits are present throughout the region, promoting the Mothman to use its flight for traversal. Dry Ditch is a solid example of how to correctly alter regions for your Slugcat campaign. Although some room qualities are not fully removed for the outsider's campaign, the whole place feels unique to drainage system without the use of any new rooms. So yeah, big fan of Outsider's drainage system. I'm really excited to see more custom slug cats employ the use of dev tools to make unique versions of the regions for a fresh experience during their campaign. As for the Outsider as a whole, I think it's a very solid custom slug cat. Easily one of the top five, and I'm glad I finally got to play it. Okay, the next segment is the Dress My Slug Cat one, but I didn't have time to like properly format it, so I'm just gonna tell you now and then resume my work afterwards.
Howling Rift by Nautilo is an infernal region ported to 1.9. It is an incredibly hostile region, at least by Rainworld standards. The region is in the remains of an old mining site, with the whole place being stifled in immeasurable heat. You can find the entrances to the region in memory crypts or the middle of subterranean. Howling Rift has a very strong creative vision behind it, and so the whole region feels very concise with all its elements. For example, the massive custom neon signs convey the overbearing nature of the region, or the animated spinning fan lights giving the indoor sections a claustrophobic feel. There is also the little things, like the fairy particle system being used to create embers that scorch through the room. Or even simpler than that, the sound design of Howling Rift really brings the place together. All of the elements I just described can be found in this one room. I will shut up for a bit so you can admire the room. Howling Rift also has a custom creature living in it, called the Fat Firefly. I'm not going to show footage of this fella due to spoiler reasons, as encountering it for yourself is much more fun than me just telling you what it does. It's a bit annoying that the dependency of the Fat Firefly actually shows pictures of it, which kind of spoils the surprise, but they are still cool creatures nonetheless. Howling Rift also has amazing threat music by Snoodle. I'll play a snippet of it here. To conclude, I think Howling Rift is a very solid custom region. It knows what it wants to be and so executes all of its ideas very well. Some of the rooms tiling-wise don't look the greatest, but custom signs and fans more than make up for that. Overall, it's definitely a region you should check out, like why are you not playing it? Download it now! Oh yeah, one thing I forgot to mention, you cannot play Howling Rift as Saint because of lore reasons, I guess, it like collapsed or something. So don't try and access this region as Saint. Pride Rainbow World by Jevman ported by Bro is a joyful little mod that adds rainbows to all rooms in the game. Well, only vanilla non-downport outside rooms. But apart from that, rainbows galore. Expanded Outskirts by Rake expands outskirts, more than doubling its size. There's not much to say about this one, but this mod does nail Outskirts' architecture, and getting lost in a sort of familiar, unfamiliar land is very fun. It kind of simulates the effect of doing a first playthrough again, where everything in Outskirts is unfamiliar. This mod actually adds a new gate to industrial complex, so there is a reason for you to delve deep into the expansion. My main issue with this mod is it doesn't feel very intrusive, if that makes any sense. I don't think it encroaches enough on the actual vanilla region. Like, you could just ignore all the new connections and just play Outskirts, which kind of casts aside the mod's content. But if you like Outskirts, well, here's more Outskirts, so enjoy. Now here's the section of mods that don't need my commentary. Okie dokie, that was the end of the video. Sorry this one was a bit late, I couldn't physically work on videos, and then making this episode was also a nightmare. The Savage was going to be in this video, but I couldn't get it working, so maybe next month.